right, welcome back here to the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Ghost Chevrolet. Uh, as uh, all of you have been commenting and uh, joining us over the last couple of weeks and months, uh, it has been cool to get to know uh, this new staff. Uh, that Brian Kelly has brought in. We've had a chance to talk to a lot of the assistant coaches, a lot of the coordinators, a lot of the people that have come through, including some of the the new faces and football players uh, that have come through here in uh, what was a a very intense uh, roster rebuilding process uh, for LSU. Somebody that we are very familiar with, uh, somebody that is very familiar uh, with LSU, with the state of Louisiana, uh, and comes back to the university uh, with so much respect, yet... Uh, so much more experience uh, at a different level. When he left, he was the best recruiter and one of the best running back coaches in America. Now he comes back to LSU with head coaching experience and much more success stories uh, along the way. He's back as the associate head coach at LSU, uh, back in a familiar role coaching the running backs, uh, and now joining us uh, on the set here of the Jordy Collada Show. And it is great to see our friend, uh, Coach Frank Wilson here. Coach, good morning. How are you? Good morning. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Absolutely, man. Um, how'd you get back? Um, you know what? Uh, seven years flew by. I did. Right? It did. Flew by. And so, and my last stop was very fortunate to, to get an opportunity to go to Lake Charles, um, but had to uh, deal with some very challenging circumstances there. Uh, as we were there and um, all that the world dealt with Mm -hmm. pandemic and we dealt with Laura and Delta and those things and uh, there was a change there was a change at LSU uh, and coach Kelly reached out uh, to me I got a chance to visit with him uh, and it was a great uh, meeting uh, for several hours he and I uh, and I just felt that he was uh, a head coach that had experience, that had leadership skills, um, and one of a handful of people that I thought uh, that I can learn from, that I can continue to grow from uh, professionally. And so uh, I jumped at the opportunity to come back home. Um, How has the job, the league, changed since you left and come back to it now? Yeah. Um, The league... uh, College football has changed. The landscape of transfer portal, the landscape of NIL has changed. Uh, But it's like anything, you adapt or you die, Mm -hmm. right? And so we've adapted to it. Um, I like us. I I like where we're at right now. I like the, um, where we're trending. Uh, I think we're ascending. I think our program uh, is under the right leadership uh, with the right type of uh, staff and support staff uh, with the right AD, with the right president to take mm-hmm. LSU uh, back to its rightful place, yeah. to the top. You've seen a lot of good things in recruiting. You've seen a lot of stories and streaks and things that uh, have really uh, paid off for the school that you've been at. What have you? Um, what is your point of view of, of the success that you guys have been riding over the last week and a half, the last two weeks? You know, I think it's, it's, it starts with 2022. You, you look at... Uh, us getting here in, in January and trying to assemble uh, a staff uh, or a, a, a recruiting class um, and uh, really taking a look at the portal. And, and I believe we picked up 14, 15 guys out of that portal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and seven, seven or eight of those guys are, are guys that are from Louisiana. Uh, you look at the high school portion of the other 10 we took, uh, those guys were Louisiana. Uh, and uh, you throw in Harold Perkins with that, who is Louisiana, although sure. he played his high school, um, uh, high school football in Texas, um, and that's that's LSU. That's that's ten high school guys. That's seven transfer guys. That's seventeen out of the twenty-five uh, to start building it the way that Coach Kelly uh, saw it, uh, the way that well, we see it. Um, and it's allowed us to uh, go into a 23 campaign uh, that's starting to hit stride, that both near and abroad, uh, we're getting guys that, that fit LSU, that fit us. Yeah. Can you take me back to when you were just announced onto the job and the challenge it was in um, just getting this roster to a competitive place like you guys opened up spring football with? Yeah. So um, 
you know, the, the December period had already gone beyond. We were heading into the February signing period. Um, and it was, um, well, we were right at the December before we got to the February signing period. Um, somewhere around the state championship, because I remember we were a week away from <laughs> right, the, the signing day. And there were some in-state guys we tried to make inroads with, uh, which was challenging. It was challenging for a new staff. We had just gotten here. We were trying to make our, our presence felt uh, before we went into a dead period, et cetera. Um, and so we, uh, we gave it our best. And, uh, you know, thank God we had some guys in position um, that, that were already committed or recommitted when you talk about the Emory Jones, the Will Campbell, those guys. And then there was still work to do. Uh, for those guys we needed to get in February, the Harold Perkinses of the world. Um, but our, our, our emphasis turned then to the portal. Mm -hmm. How do we get good now in the midst of attrition and losing quality players? Uh, you replace them with veteran quality players. Right. Uh, and so we made a conscientious effort to go get those guys that we thought can come in and, and help us and be immediate impact players for us. And I thought we did a really good job in doing so and fulfilling our needs. Um, I think one thing that's lost in the greatness of your recruiting is the way that you recruit to the depth chart, the way that you mm -hmm. recruit to the roster. Uh, at when, at, at the point when you get the roster back to where it's manageable and it's competitive the way mm -hmm. you uh, and the staff and Coach Kelly and everybody approves of it, how much do you see the balance of high school to portal recruiting each year? Yeah, um, you know, that's that's – the part that has to be seen. You, you don't know uh, because um, roster management is everything. And so you recruit to the need, to the number, uh, based on the attrition that happens year in and year out. You can anticipate those guys that are seniors. You can anticipate those guys that may have a career-ending uh, injury. Mm -hmm. But what you don't account for is the young guy who decides – to go back home or to go to another place, you weren't prepared for it. And mm -hmm. so I think as you look at the NC2A and legislations being brought about that now puts timetables so that you can recruit to your roster um, opposed to being shocked and then, you know, signing a class, then losing people. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there's some legislation that's, that's favorable that's going to help us manage that better. Um, but, you know, we, we, we want to do well uh, with our high school coaches. We, we want to start in the state of Louisiana and then go uh, from inside out the way we've always done it. And I think um, – and that's exactly what Coach Kelly wants to do mm -hmm. and uh, something that we all uh, are on the same page with. Um, you come with this reputation of the godfather of the state of Louisiana. Uh, people recognize you to get to LSU and to get through New Orleans. You've got to go through Frank Wilson how, how do you manage that in the building where now it feels like it's much more of a national staff where there's so many relationships mm -hmm. so so far stretched away from Louisiana um, and you're the guy that has, it feels like, uh, obviously the most knowledge of how the state operates and works from a high school football and recruiting standpoint? You know, I, I think BK's uh, outlook, his view is, is spot on. Um, he knows what he wants. He, he knows what we need. Uh, he said from the very beginning, uh, we're going to recruit, recruit Louisiana first. Uh, and that first week uh, on the job, the fir first thing he did was go down to uh, the high school state coaching clinic in uh, downtown right before the state championship and, uh, and, and said that to our high school state coaches. Um, and so I, I do think that uh, that is real. Uh, as evident with the class of 2022, you're starting to see 2023 here. It, it's starting to um, to go in that direction uh, mm -hmm. as we're starting to uh, galvanize and, and, and get some of these in-state players uh, on our roster. And I think there's still more to come uh, right now. Um, but, you know, it's we do we do have a, a wide range. We can cast our net probably further than we've ever done before mm -hmm. because we have so many coaches with great relationships throughout the entire United States. And so whether it's the East Coast, the West Coast, the North or South, we, 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 we can spread. And, uh, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing for LSU and its ability 
uh, from a branding standpoint to be a national brand because we are mm -hmm. a worldwide brand. Uh, but I don't think that uh, we're going to lose sight um, of the great state of Louisiana and uh, doing a great job here as well. The night that LSU pulled out of the Texas Bowl on January 4th, there was high concern on what the running back room was going to look like this season. Um, it didn't take you long to turn that room into what feels like a pro-ready running back yeah. room. How do you feel about your guys after spring and what, what, what yeah. you were able to do? Um, I like our room. Uh, you know, we were able to, uh, to work with John Emery to uh, – to get him situated. He has worked extremely hard. He has done the work and the things necessarily to put himself in position uh, to be eligible, uh, to be ready to go this upcoming fall. Uh, and we're excited about uh, the things that he bring to the table. Certainly, uh, we went out and got Noah Kane, yep. a guy that has Louisiana ties, is born and raised in Louisiana, although he went to high school at IMG. Uh, but a guy that, uh, that that's our program type, prototype, in mm -hmm. a sense, of physicality, of downhill, of, uh, of moving the chains. Uh, we think he'll be good for us. Uh, I like the guys that are in our room. I like um, Armani. Uh, I like Trey Bradford. Um, uh, you know, those guys uh, really uh, add to us uh, and allow our, our room to be um, at its fullest. I didn't forget anybody, huh? John, Armani. Trey Bradford, Noah, uh, and Josh, and, and Josh Williams. So we, we're, we're excited about all of those guys. I think they all have skill set. They all have a talent uh, that they bring to the table. Um, and they all have their strengths. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we'll be able, uh, in our room like we've done for so long, to allow them to play to their strength where we complement each other and the team and get productivity out of all of them. The part early on that's recognizable about Kane, he came through here, Noah Kane came mm -hmm. and sat with us for about 25 minutes, is how much he respects the work that goes into being a good player, the, yeah. the nutrition part, the weight yeah. part, the, the academic part. He seems like he's very focused and motivated to, to help LSU immediately. Yeah, we, we have a room of, of mature young men. They, they all are. I'm, I'm extremely um, excited about our room. Um, you know, we, uh, it's a group of guys that in the, between the, the spring semester, summer session one has really achieved in the classroom, has really achieved in the weight room and strength and conditioning, uh, and have taken the next step. Uh, we're in great position in, in all of the things that, uh, we just mentioned, uh, because of their work, their mm -hmm. work ethic and their understanding of the culture that coach Kelly has put in place of accountability in everything that they do. Yeah. And that's allowed us to uh, really put our, uh, our best foot forward. So uh, we only hope that the room will be a, uh, an attribute mm -hmm. uh, to, our, to our team. Yeah. Um, John Emery obviously was one of the highest rated running backs to come through here since mm -hmm. Leonard and that crew in, in, in that cycle. He was committed to Georgia LSU, mm -hmm. was able to get him. You have a, a really good relationship with the, I mean, you want some Godfather stuff. I believe John Emery Sr. was on O.P. Walker's staff when yeah. Frank was the head coach back in yeah. uh, the early 2000s. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you kissed the ring <laughs> yes. legitimately. Yeah. Um, but he seems, like you said, very motivated yeah. uh, and very focused in on what seems to be his money year. Yeah, so um, both mom and dad, we, we go all the way back, high school, college days, and uh, known John, um, Mark, uh, Diamond, the, the entire family since, since birth. Uh, and even even when I was in San Antonio, he was coming out of high school, would have conversations with him then about why LSU was the best place for him uh, when he was committed to Georgia. Uh, so it's good to finally be able uh, to coach him and to know him as a young man because I had not seen him since he was a toddler. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, he's been uh, phenomenal. He's been uh, – endearing and, 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 and just really a thirst for knowledge of wanting to get better as the entire room has been. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, so John Emery Senior was my D-line coach for me. Yeah, he did a great <laughs> job for us. Yeah. It's crazy, man. What, what's it like going back to these high schools? I, I, I mean, yeah. I've told stories about I've been in New Orleans with you. Yeah. I mean, you don't pay for a meal, you don't wait for a seat. You know, there's nothing that, yeah. what's it like going back in this, in this role uh, with humbling. now this experience? Yeah, yeah. humbling. Yeah. Um, because you, you go about your business of serving a state 
of serving a city, of serving a university. And then when you, you go back at times to be received well, mm -hmm. um, just human nature, it feels good, you know, to people, for people to recognize, we know what you've done uh, for the state. We know what you've done for LSU. Uh, we appreciate you. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's it in its most genuine fashion. And that's Louisiana. Yeah. We're, we're a people culture, a people society where uh, we rely on those relationships and, and, and we share those things with one another. And so, uh, you know, at a lot of those schools, uh, it's guys that I coach that are now the coaches there. Right. And so, you know, in those conversations <laughs> yeah. with Nick Foster uh, and those at, at, at St. Aug and, and Jerry Phillips, uh, Noel Ellis, as it was for Keenan Lewis and, you know, all of those guys that I've, I've known, you know, since they were teenagers and, um, things of that nature and so and then there, there's still some guys out there who uh, was on my staff or I coached again so you know the Willie Brooks the Emmanuel Powell's the, you know they're still around as as well as the legends like the Hank Tierney's of the world yeah so it's um, it's great it's great to be able to to, to go all the way to uh, South Louisiana then go up and see Ryan Antoine at, at, at Westgate and uh, all the way up to North Louisiana and, and, and go just uh, spend some time with, with Brad Shaw, who's now the AD of mm -hmm. Bass Strip. And um, so it's, it's, it feels home. Yeah. Like, I guess that's the base, best way to put it. Yeah. Uh, it feels home because you've spent so many years uh, with these coaches in some capacity, uh, and I'm just one of them. Yeah. And I tell them that I'm, I'm cut from the same cloth. I'm one of you. That th Those are my kin. You know, if you will. Sure. Yeah. It's good to have you back, bro. Yeah, it's good to be back. <laughs> I know that. Yeah. I know that. Uh, you will be remember. You know, when it when it when it all goes down, you'll be remembered for the Leonard Fournette's, Devin White, Slayel Collins, Jeremy <laughs> Hills, Jarvis Landry's, Odell Beckham's, the five stars that you were able to, you know, put your sights on, go get, <laughs> and and not let them out of the state. Yeah. I think it, it's more important the guys that you close like Foster Morrow and Russell Gage and Deion Jones and the, uh, Duke Riley and. Uh, Andre Anthony, Anthony. <laughs> obviously, uh, how do you go into yeah. looking at this? How do you evaluate those guys? Because sometimes the 25th scholarship yeah. is most important, yeah. is, is as important as the first one that you handed out. Yeah, so I, I uh, Duke made it back to Miami on yesterday. And uh, so we we're having a phone conversation. Um, and uh, his mom had told him that he she ran into me. We were over at another broken egg. Mm -hmm. And uh, Coach Kelly and I, and I was able to introduce her to Coach. And um, we talked about that. And, um, you know, he was, he, he was one of those late yeah, guys. Yeah, he was the 25th right? guy, right? Yeah. And so in his class, uh, we're sitting in a home, and I have this paperwork that wasn't really worth the paper it was written on, but says that when a scholarship becomes available, we'll give it to you. Uh, but we're offering you uh, a blue shirt for you to come, and then we'll sign you in January or whatever, right? And so I'm reading it out to him, and you can just see the hurt in his face, uh, in his parents' face. And so after I finished reading it, I tear it up right in front of him. <laughs> I said, and uh, this is no more because you, Duke Riley, have a full scholarship to LSU and the family wow, erupts, dude, right? I got goosebumps, man. <laughs> the family erupts and we're crying and laughing and, and all of those things. But it's so much to those things. And, you know, he brought up because at the time, Pivato was at Kentucky. Wow. Right? And Pivato was recruiting him at Kentucky and he was considering Ole Miss. And he calls, I call in and he tells me he's not coming to LSU on a visit because we don't have a scholarship for him just yet. And I go into my, my spill of, I said, who's with you? And he said, my entire family. I said, put me on speaker, right? So they put me on speaker phone, right? And I, I go in. I go to do yeah, yeah. what I you do. Turn right? into Frank Wilson. Right? <laughs> right. And we and so it's, it's, it's a great meeting. We hang up. And three minutes later, my phone rings, and Pivotal called me. He goes, listen, I'm Bradley Dell. I know you don't know me, but... I was doing my home visit, and they put you on speaker. <laughs> and that was the most badass shit I've ever heard. And we're going to work together. And I told that kid, you go to LSU. Right? 
<laughs> so here's the guy who's the linebacker coach, co coordinator at Kentucky, telling Duke Riley, Yo, no, yeah. you going and I'm coming too. <laughs> and lo and behold, a year later, he, he came. That is right? so good. <laughs> so that's one of the, 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 the great stories uh, of me intervening in the midst of Bradley Dell doing his in home visit and they put me on speaker to try to convince Duke to come. That is yeah. so good. When did you know you had Leonard? Did you know when he puts the hat on at the Under Armour game? Yeah. How far in advance did you know that you had him? Yeah, here's what I tell people. Anytime uh, an athlete tells you, uh, I don't know yet, mm. when we announce, Jesus. I'll tell you. Oh, my God. Or we're going into prayer mm. and we're going to be silent for some time. Mm. It's You're not the guy. You're mm. not the school. They're right. not coming. Uh -huh. The school, I have never in all of my years – Number one player in the country, five star here, five star there. Had a guy, and not know he was coming. Right. They tell you. They, right. they, they yeah. they're gonna tell the school they're going to. They're going to tell. Right. And so um, we knew. I knew um, for sure days before, maybe a week before the actual announcement. Uh, but the suspense, you, you give them their moment. You don't take that. Sure. From them. But like you were like secure, like we got him. Yeah. 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 Uh, what was that like? Because how long did you recruit Leonard? Three years. And it was, I mean, you offered him as a freshman. We offered him as a freshman. Uh, I was at McDonald 35 football game. St. Aug was playing 35. He's a freshman, and he rushes for 200-something yards, right? Mm -hmm. And I see his dad going to the concession stand, so I sneak down, right? <laughs> <laughs> and accidentally on purpose, bumped yeah. into him, right? And, uh, Oops, sorry. While yeah. we're using the restroom or whatever, right? Hey, I'm in one portal, he's in another. I'm like, hey, your son's not bad. <laughs> 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 we're in different portals, right? And uh, I say to him, I said, listen, we're going to offer him a scholarship. And I said, and I want you to know, here's what's going to happen next. He'll become mm -hmm. the number one player in America by the time he's a senior. And he said, like, get out of here with that. And I was like, no, nah, he will. But I want you to remember this moment <laughs> right. in the stall, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> and, uh, but that was, uh, that was the night we offered him, St. Aug versus McDonald 35 at Tad Gormley Stadium, the first week in September. How <clears throat> proud of you or how proud of him are you now to invite him back and speak yeah. to your running back room? Yeah. Uh, forget that he's got a Super Bowl ring on, all that yeah. to, to get to that point. You know, so last week I, uh, I was out. I wasn't in the office. He calls me. He said, I have my son, um, and I want to walk him through the building and this. And I said, I'm not there, but hold on. Give me a moment. So I make a call and let the guys know he's coming, and I want you to bring uh, – you know, when he comes in, I want you to bring him in the team room and uh, the Leonard Fournette video. I want his, his, his son to see that. Mm -hmm. I want his daughter to see that. And you watch, you know, introduce it as I would, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, and, uh, and give him his flowers, give him his moments. And it meant the world to him. And um, so they were able to do that for him. And uh, he called when they were in the indoor and he's like FaceTiming me and he's telling his son, this is where daddy practiced at. And those things are so precious. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like when yeah. when Tyron came and he's speaking to the team and I got a, a, a teardrop on my, my eyelid because the command he takes of the room Oof. and the maturity and the man that he's become, that he, he's a public speaker now. This guy who, yeah. who didn't talk now. Right. So contrary to popular belief, Tyron Matthews wasn't loud and brash, and he was he was real secluded. He didn't say a whole bunch, and all right, and mm -hmm. you know, but he was mild mannered. Kept his key. head down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he didn't yeah. he didn't talk a whole bunch, mm -hmm. and to see his public speaking development skills to be what they are now, to watch him last week in New Orleans at the Saints facility, um, galvanize the community. When those young men do those things, to watch Devin yesterday up in Shreveport take 30 kids in a police department to uh, Dick Sporting Goods or Academy, wherever it was, and back-to-school stuff for their season, all of those things swell your heart. Yeah, It is because it's, it's the men that they become, the husbands, the fathers, the responsible citizens that they are. Tyron Matthew came here. Uh, and sat down for 45 minutes we just I said Frank Wilson and he opened up for like yeah 45 seconds a minute 15 of just 
gushing yeah. on y'all's relationship, but he told the story about Knoxville. Tell yeah. tell us the story from your point of view. <laughs> Because that's a great story. So, Inky Johnson told the story on social media, too. I didn't know that he was yeah, in the room yeah, that day. Yeah, he was. Yeah. yeah. Um, I never heard him say it. So, Ink was one of our GAs. Right. And he told him. <laughs> and he says, he said, and Frank Wilson is pounding the desk. Yeah. And so, so I mean, Coach Owen almost, and I almost got in fisticuffs behind right. this, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, I'm the receiver coach there. Mm -hmm. and this is your first year? At Tennessee. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so, Tyron's an underclassman. Um so we have two van loads that comes to Knoxville, right? <laughs> right? So it's Anthony Johnson, it's Lyle Collins, it's uh, Munchie Lego, mm -hmm. uh, it's Trey Turner. Uh, the family. It's, yeah, it's the it's family. The fam. it's, it's, Jarvis. It's Jarvis. Yeah. Um, what's the boy named? Uh, Trev uh, Trevon Reed? Uh, Trevon Reed, yeah, from uh, from um, uh, went to Auburn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Trevon Reed, all of these guys are up there, right? So anyway, Nick Montana's the quarterback there wow. at the camp, um, and it's who's who. <clears throat> and there's this this guy that's just locking everybody up, right? I mean, has brush burns from the turf all over his body, black pebbles in his mouth, and he just <laughs> he refuses to go away, right? right. And, and, of course, I knew who Tyron was, and um, he just play after play after play. Like, but did you know who Tyron was? Like, yeah. do you expect him to come up there and dominate like that? Um, I thought he could. I, had, uh -huh. I knew him since he played park ball in right. North, for yeah. New Orleans Recreation Department. And there were always stories of, of Cornbread's little boy. Hey, man, and, and I remember the first time I seen him playing baseball. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he was phenomenal then, mm -hmm. but was never big in stature. And so, right. All right, we'll see. So the Wayne Cordova years at St. Aug, right after Katrina, uh, he was a really good player for him, but he was limited. They didn't do a whole bunch with him. They get a new coaching staff, and I, and it happens to be Dave Johnson. Uh, Dave was one of my receiver coaches at O'Perry Walker, who's now yeah. the head coach at St. Aug at that time. He had just left Millsaps. And I said, you have to do things with him and, and allow him to be who y'all telling me who he is. So he played Wildcat quarterback. He played running back, punt, punter, punt returner, kick returner. You know, he was a long jumper. He was a high jumper. Right. He, he, he did everything. <clears throat> and uh, he really, that's when you saw all that Tyron was. So anyway, so when they bought him up there, I, I thought he would be. But it was my first time seeing him against the best sure. receivers in the country. Um, and so he, uh, he and Jarvis Landry lit it up. It got to a point where they were just yeah. going against each other yeah. every time. Yeah. Right? yeah. I mean. Cause, cause Jarvis, so Jarvis is a talker. Right. Tyron's not Jarvis calling everybody out. I want you, I want you, I want you. <laughs> and he's beating everybody and Tyron just quietly walks up and they tangle up and you know, all this good stuff. And it was, it was great competition. Sure. Uh, and, and of course Jarvis was younger. Mm -hmm. But Jarvis also was the same kid who played in the state championship as a freshman and as a sophomore, yeah. was the MVP. Making you know? plays. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and, right. <clears throat> and so, anyway, we go in meetings, and I'm like, it, it's, it's, we got to take him. And, and it's, it's a no-brainer. And Monty Kiffin was like, I like him, Frank. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's, he's, he's a little small, but, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, every receiver we've offered, he just locked up. What are we talking about? Right. Like, what, what are y'all yeah. talking about? What's yeah, the debate? And so, uh, Coach O tells me, he's like, he ain't the prototype. <laughs> and I was like, well, he's a program type. I tell you that. If, if we're playing with those receivers and they can't beat him, we should take him. And so we go back and forth of healthy discussion. F you, no F you. We go back and forth of healthy discussion, and uh, it was great. Yeah. Um, and uh, a couple of weeks later, a month later, or so I leave to come to come here and mm -hmm. continue the deal with Tyron and the rest of history. What about that August morning? That that. The, meet, the meeting and him being thrown off the team. What was that day like for mm. you? Because, mm. I mean, I can remember dry, yeah. it was raining, it was storming, yeah. it was dark, it was. Yeah. So, um, our sports medicine department and I were in conversation. 
I went up to see Les, and he told me what he felt we had to do at that point. Uh, I asked him had he talked to Tyron. He said I'm about to talk with him now. So I gave him their, their time. Uh, after they visit, I went over to WCA. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and he's sitting outside on a milk crate mm. Mm. Uh, outside of WCA. Uh, and it may have been Corey may have came with me over there. Uh, Corey had just gotten here, uh, Raymond. And, uh, and I remember asking him some, some, some personal questions and him answering them and then laying his head on my shoulder mm. crying about Shit. what had happened. And it was absolutely devastating. Mm. It was devastating. And, uh, but immediately started thinking, okay, so where do we go next? And the the whole college world wanted he gonna transfer here. He should go here. And was like, mm. let's let's just slow down something and talk to she Sheila and Tyrone, his guardians, his uncle and aunt who raised him, uh, about what we would do next. They came in town and um, just started thinking of the mm. next things we needed to do. And uh, of course, ultimately, he wound up um, going to Houston with a uh, with coach to. Um, to therapy mm -hmm. before he got himself situated but it was a very very tough mm -hmm. tough situation a tough thing to go through uh with him um but uh but look at god sure. and, and what it did for him and uh that gives him a platform a testimony uh to be able to share his story to serve as inspiration for so many absolutely absolutely an incredible story to see uh where it started to where it is <laughs> Uh, now, LSU running backs coach Frank Wilson, did you take away from spring what you were looking to accomplish going into it just on the field? Yeah, I think so. I, I, I think we fostered competition. I thought we got better. Um, you know, we, we have a saying, uh, our depth chart is etched in sand, and it's real. Um, and we, we want to get it to a point that when uh, we're in a game situation and, and Coach Denbrock, Coach Kelly says, uh, who do you want in? Uh, we can say it don't matter. They all bite, mm -hmm. and you know they all yeah. bite. And, and and we we coach them the same. We train them the same. Uh, in a sense, they're all unique, and there's different approaches with each individual. Um, but they're all trained to be able to be the starter. Mm -hmm. You have to coach them that way because uh, at our position group like that, mm -hmm. it can change. And, uh, and I think we have. Uh, I think we have four or five guys that can start for us right now. Uh, and that's what we wanted coming out of spring ball. Yeah, Denbrock sat right there and talked about the quarterback competition and yeah. says it's probably the best in the country. Or yeah. He says it's competitive. No, it is. What would, would you make of that, that group through spring? Our quarterback group? Yes. I like them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just um, you look at uh, anytime you have a room where there's harmony but yet – fierce competition, it's a good room. Mm -hmm. um, because a guy who has an unwavering belief in himself will confidently go about doing his business in spite of the guy next to him. Mm -hmm. So he's really not in competition with him or him. He's with himself. Mm -hmm. And that um, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. That's what you want. When guys are insecure or unsure of themselves, they start looking at the guy next to them. Mm -hmm. And you probably don't have the right guy. The great ones never worry about that. Yeah. The great ones, they don't. They, they, they go about doing their business. They encourage competition and they thrive off of it. Yeah. And so, uh, and that's what we want in the backfield room and throughout our team as well as in our quarterback room. How do you feel about the group you're taking into the SEC compared to where it was on January when you took the job to what you guys were able to build going yeah. into the season? So um, so we were, you know, John didn't play. Trey Bradford wasn't playing. Uh, Noah wasn't here. Armani was hurt. <laughs> yeah, right. So we uh, – we had Josh and uh, a young man that's no longer with us. That was that was the backfield mm -hmm. at that time, and so it was pretty much depleted. And so to to build it back up um, from an academic standpoint, from a mentality standpoint, from a culture standpoint, from a skill um, from a skill level to to not just what do you do. 
but this is how you do it. This is why you do it. And this is what they're looking at on the other side because this is the defensive fit. And so if you take this course and you do this with your shoulders, with your feet, it will do this for them. And that as the runner, this needs to happen at the heels of the offensive lineman because anything premature of that, they won't be able to work to the second level. Mm -hmm. And that backer will rock back and be able to make a play on you without interference. And so really training them to be young pros and it's not just get the ball and go that way. Um, and whether it's in the run game or the pass game, to, to get a pre-snap read, to see the shell of a defense, and, and what, based on that look, what's anticipated. And because that's anticipated, I need to slow down because something's coming, or I need to get out instead of just patting my feet in the backfield. Mm -hmm and give my quarterback somewhere to go with the ball. Yeah. And so I think we're better students of the game now than we were in January, and we'll be even that much better come, come September. A tradition that started in your first year at LSU when you started was number seven with Pat Pete. Yeah. You went to Tyron and on down the line. We've seen Leonard wear it, and now we see Kayshawn so, Booty yeah. wearing it. What have you, yeah. What's your relationship like with the team superstar and now yeah. wearing number seven? So he was uh, – he was my first guy when I got here. You know, he was unsure, you know, if he was going <laughs> to. Frank, go to, Frank, welcome, go to work. <laughs> Grab that leather jacket Jack that you pulled out. <laughs> <laughs> it's all I had. I know. <laughs> Without unboxing, it was, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, now go to work. <laughs> so he, um, no, he's, he's, we have a great relationship. Yeah. He's been phenomenal. Um, he is deserving of number seven. He embodies it. Uh, I'm excited uh, for the young man. I think he's extremely talented. I think he's driven, um, and I think he'll uh, he'll wear it well mm -hmm. in, in honor of all those that came before. Um, do you want to be a head coach again? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm good right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's not something uh, that's pressing for me uh, right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to be uh, – a good assistant coach for yeah. Brian Kelly. I want to be a good assistant coach for my peers and colleagues, and uh, I want to do uh, my part in, in helping our staff, our university, um, be the best that we can be. You understand this because you sat in the chair. It's got to be challenging to bring a group together as yeah. fast as BK did. Yeah. And then, really, from just the point of view that I've had of watching you guys walk through here and talk, yeah. Y'all all seem to really kind of get along and like one yeah. another, which I, I'd imagine yeah. is a big deal. They're pros. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if nothing else, he's assembled uh, a bunch of pros. And so we have a staff of men that are like they were former players. Mm -hmm. So they were uh, they exude confidence in their profession. Uh, and everybody respectfully is the head coach of their room, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an expert in offensive line play, in wide receiver play, in quarterback play, in defensive back player, in linebacker play, in D-line play. And so we're able to move in harmony um, because there's no egos, because everyone is confident in what they're doing that complements what the other guy is doing. And so I think we have an outstanding staff and uh, I'm honored to be a part of it. Absolutely. Uh, what do you make of the league? Yeah, yeah, it hadn't changed. It's just <laughs> right. uh, I, I think the, the SEC West, um, people may not like it, but I, I think it stands alone. Mm -hmm. I think it stands atop. Uh, of, uh, and there's good coaches all over yeah. uh, in conferences throughout America and at, at every level. But I think the SEC West is second to none. Right. Um, this recruiting cycle was very different in Louisiana, <clears throat> right? When you look at the the quarterback heavy, not as many defensive line. Yeah. How, how do you, we're how, talking twenty two or twenty three? Tw twenty three. Okay. Where you are now? H how are you, how do you how far down the line are you evaluating classes? Uh, twenty. Uh, we we have guys on the board as far as twenty six. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so that's what like the camps last month are so instrumental yeah, for what you're doing. Yeah, and so we. Uh, we have a couple of 25, 20, several 25 guys, a handful of 26 guys. Um, 
and then have fully identified 24 guys. Uh, but there's still a lot to be done in, in 23 here. Uh, there's been a mad rush here in July. Uh, we anticipate it'll go through the start of the season and then pick back up. And so, um, as you know so well, uh, there's recruiting and then there's the fight. Mm -hmm. And so we, <laughs> we have these verbals. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to get them to the finish line. You got to get them signed on that dotted line. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and that's the part uh, where you, you earn your way. And so even, uh, even in last year's cycle when Harold Perkins verbally on television committed to uh, A&M, it was all right. Here we go now. Mm -hmm. Buckle up. Go. Yeah, and uh, and it went all the way. It went all the way down. And like even in that case, we you know we knew uh, days a couple of days before that yeah. we were going to get him. Even though the whole world was all right, what's going to happen? Because you always tell it. So if you're the school that's sitting there saying, all right, I hope he chooses uh, us. You're out. You're out. Yeah. Yeah. Now could it change? Yeah. But generally, um, I, I haven't. And. I recruited a lot of guys. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt you, about it. You Done usually, this a time or two. <laughs> right. Yeah, you usually know. Uh, what gets lost, though, in all of that, and mm -hmm. I, I appreciated Sherman Wilson for pointing it out, is your on-the-field development. Yeah. Because, look, man, Alfred <clears throat> Blue doesn't end up in the NFL with 300 yards rushing on accident. Yeah. You know, I mean, some people are coming down here and saying, wow, he's, he can play. He's just yeah. been behind a stable of pros. Yeah. So what, what happens for us, uh, we try to develop the room. Uh, that we maximize uh, them intellectually um, um, and athletically. They possess the skill set with a lot of rubber steel on their tires. Mm -hmm. They're not worn. Yeah. And so the, the list sure. from Spencer Ware, from Richard Murphy down, yeah. they've all at least had a cup of tea, if not a, a long career. Um, you know, from, from Richard to Steven to Spencer Ware to Alfred Blue uh, to Michael Ford. Um, I guess next would have been... Jeremy Hill. Jer Stephen Ridley. Yeah. Jeremy Hill, uh, Alfred Blue, Terrence McGee, Kenny Hilliard, wow. Leonard, <laughs> Daryl, uh, Darius, Clyde. So all of them we recruited or coached have had a chance to play in the National Football League. Well, wow. Coach Frank Wilson, yeah. back in Baton Rouge, man. It feels good, looks good to see you wearing the colors. Can't wait to see you on a Saturday. Some of these boys don't know what it's like on Saturday night in Tiger Stadium, yeah. right? Yeah. It's, it, it's different. You know, I, I remember listening to this documentary, and it's Marcus Spears speaking. Hmm. And he said, when you, when you go into Tiger Stadium, you better be sure of who you are. Hmm. Because if not, uh, it's going to be a long night for yeah. you. Yeah, you you you'll be trained, you'll be prepared. You get and exposed. When you, yeah, when you when you go into Tiger Stadium, it's uh, there's nothing like mm -hmm. it, and there's not many arenas, uh, stadiums I haven't coached in. There's none like that valley. There's nothing like it nowhere in America. Yeah, it's a special place. Uh, when Tebow looks into the SEC network cameras and they ask him, what's the fiercest place you've ever played? He's just, mm -hmm. it's different at yeah. LSU. You know yeah, what I mean? It is. When you got Jamal Adams jumping around, telling him to lock the gates and <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's a different yeah. night, man. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know, I distinctly remember times with the ground shaking. For sure. The Absolutely. The yeah. Sam Montgomery, the 2012 game. South Carolina? The, no, the 2012 Alabama LSU oh, game. Yeah, yeah. Where, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? That, that the one was, that went back and forth. Oh, yeah. the, the fourth quarter run from Copeland to the mm. student section, and everybody's out on the field yeah. and the band's playing. Yeah. It's still, I mean, there's no feeling as like electric it. as it I've mean, ever seen it. Yeah, that was with Zach, right? Zach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was Odell and Jarvis yeah. were killing him. Yeah, killing him. Yeah, <laughs> killing him. Um, great to see you. Kiss the ring, man. The Godfather yeah, yeah. is here. It's Glad good to, to see be you here, back, man. Humbled and honored to be here. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. Frank Wilson. Uh, Louisiana zone representing LSU. That is a very good thing for everybody who cares about LSU football. We're going to be back and eating compliments of Iversteins here on a foodie Friday. Uh, coach Frank Wilson, uh, great uh, time with him. We appreciate that. Make sure you hit the like button, share button, comment button. We'll be back with more.